Honestly, I was at my lowest of my lows. I'm so tired. I was just like, I feel like I'm carrying everything and it's just so hard to handle. Or just to a point where I just be like, you know what? Like, I'm just gonna finish my getting my high school diploma and just end it, that's it. I just couldn't anymore. I was on the verge of that's it. Like, I'm scared that if I don't reach out for help or cry for help, then maybe I wouldn't be here today. So the first time I saw Kayla on the pediatric floor, she was scared and she was depressed. Her father was jailed for domestic violence and she witnessed that violence. She witnessed her father hitting her mother and causing trauma in the house. So he went to jail for, I believe it was four years or five years, and now he's being released from jail and that was causing her great worry. My mom also had suffered an injury in the head, so that just overstressed me and it really taught me off. I think I had had depression, but it wasn't until now that it really like manifested itself and it really just hit me. When I was first hired, I would get called maybe once or twice a month. It's just become such an epidemic now and the frequency of suicidal children coming into the emergency room uh, has just skyrocketed. At one point when it was busy in, in May or June, I was getting called almost every day for a pediatric consult. There are children out there suffering in silence and the, the, no one is really talking about it. It, it. it feels as if a lot of society has moved on, uh, but the consequences of the pandemic have, have really hit the Boyle Heights community uh, very hard. What's behind that is depression. And what's causing the depression oftentimes is feelings of rejection by their peers or by their family. Feeling that they're not good enough. Feeling hopeless and helpless in their situation. Not only do children and families have to deal with a lot of crime and gang violence, but uh, housing insecurity is another big issue with the inaffordability of rents. And not only that, COVID was especially hard on a lot of the Latino families in the Boyle Heights area because they were first line workers. They didn't have the luxury of working from home. And a lot, I'm still dealing with a lot of children whose, fa whose parents died. I'm very proud of Kayla. She's a girl with a plan for herself, for her life. And she works hard. And I think she's really started to care about herself. She's shown me and shown her family and the community that she's working toward her future. A lot of the teenagers in the community can learn a lot from Kayla by seeing her courage to be honest, to share stories that maybe people would be ashamed of sharing. There is a metaphor in psychology, in Jungian psychology, where if you shed light on the shadow, the shadow becomes smaller. Sí, yo estoy muy orgullosa de, de que terminaste tu high school y también me siento feliz y también orgullosa de que lograste llegar a la universidad. Thank you, White Memorial, for giving me another chance to live. Without White Memorial, I probably wouldn't be here. I feel like if I wouldn't have been heard, I wouldn't have been helped, I probably would have been carrying the pain, I probably would have been quiet to myself and just one day just dealt with it, but I'm thankful because I came here and I really got the help I needed. I was listened to, I was um, diagnosed. I just was really cared for. At the end of the day, our trauma, our pain doesn't define us. We can break through. We, uh, we have the power. We can keep going, we got this. Um, let's not let our our depression, our anxiety to find us. Let's say, like, look, I'm doing it. Like, I'm doing it, you're not gonna stop me.